So in the previous lesson, we looked at how to find the general solution to a second order linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. Now, because the coefficients were constant, what we did was to generate the characteristic equation or better still the auxiliary equation. And then we found the general solution. Now, in this lesson, we are going to consider second order linear homogeneous differential equations with non-constant coefficients. So let's assume that we have a differential equation which is given of the form p of x times y prime prime plus q of x times y prime plus r of x times y equals zero. This is a second order linear homogeneous differential equation. Now, since the coefficient here, that is either p of x, q of x, or r of x, is a non-constant coefficient, it means that we can't use the characteristic equation anymore. So we need to fall on a different approach, which we call the method of reduction of order. Now, as the name goes, method of reduction of order, we are going to reduce the order of this differential equation from second order to first order. And with this kind of approach, one limitation is you should be giving one of the solutions to the differential equation in the problem. And so with that solution, you can find the second solution. So one easier way in approaching this particular kind of question is so long as we can represent this differential equation in the form y prime prime plus p of x times y prime plus q of x times y equals zero. So long as we can reduce the differential equation, that is we can reduce equation one to equation two, then given one of the solutions, which is y one of x, given one of the solutions, y one of x, we can find the second solution that is given by y2 of x equals y1 of x times the integral of e to the power negative the integral of p of x dx divided by y1 square of x dx. So given one of the solutions y1 of x, we can find y2 of x. And then with that, the general solution by the principle of superposition is given by y equals c1 y1 of x plus c2 y2 of x so this is the general solution to the given differential equation the general solution so in this lesson we are going to solve two examples let's try to solve the first example so in the first example, given that y1 is equal to 1 over x, we are going to find the second linearly independent solution y2 of the differential equation and hence the general solution. So let's try to solve this together. So we have the differential equation, which is x squared y prime prime plus 3xy prime plus y equals zero and then we have the first solution to be y1 equals one over x now you realize that the coefficients x square and then three x are non-constant coefficients and so we are going to divide through by x square so that y prime prime can stand alone so with that we divide through by x square by x square x square x square and then we have y prime prime plus x cancels one of the x's we have 3 over x times y prime plus we have 1 over x square times y equals 0 so we've been able to represent the differential equation in the form y prime prime plus p of x times y prime plus q of x times y equals zero so let's write down the expression for p of x so comparing these two equations 
we have p of x to be equal to 3 over x so that is 3 over x now since we have one of the solutions which is y1 equals 1 over x let's try to find the second solution so that is given by y2 equals y1 times the integral of e to the power negative the integral of p of x dx divided by y1 square and then dx so let's plug in um, the expressions for y1 and then p of x so we have y1 to be 1 over x the integral of e to the power negative the integral of p of x that is 3 over x dx divided by y1 which is 1 over x so instead of 1 over x you are going to represent that as x to the power negative 1 and then we have the square of it dx so next you are going to have 1 over x we have the integral of e to the power negative now we are going to transport this 3 in front of the integral sign so this becomes negative 3 we have the integral of 1 over x dx divided by x to the power negative 2 so negative so these two affects negative 1 so it becomes x to the power negative 2 and then we have the x so solving further we have y2 that is equal to 1 over x we have the integral of e to the power negative 3 now the integral of 1 over x dx that's going to give us ln of x so we have ln of x and then since we have negative 3 in front you can you can transport this to be exponent on the x okay so that becomes that becomes ln of x exponent negative 3 now if you have ln of x exponent negative 1 that is equal to ln of 1 over x okay so if you have negative 3 then that's going to be ln of 1 over x to the power 3 so let's just plug this in here so instead of ln of x to the power negative 3 we are simply going to represent that as ln of 1 over x to the power 3 divided by x exponent negative 2 dx now from properties we know that e to the power ln of x is equal to x now in that case e to the power ln of 1 over x all cube is equal to 1 over x all cube so that's what it's, that's what we are going to have in the next step so that's equal to 1 over x times the integral of we have 1 over x all cube divided by x exponent negative 2 dx so we further simplify this as 1 over x we have the integral of so let's say if you have 1 over x to the power 3 then basically that becomes x to the power negative 1 times 3 and this becomes x to the power negative 3 so we have x to the power negative 3 divided by x to the power negative 2 dx now according to the laws of indices we can simplify this as x to the power negative 3 and then this comes up it becomes positive so plus 2 and then that becomes negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1 so negative 1 dx finally we have 1 over x the integral of 1 over x dx because you can represent this as 1 over x so next we are going to have we have 1 over x now integral of 1 over x dx is ln of x so we have ln of x plus c but because you want to find the second solution and then we are going to cater for the constants in the general solution 
we are going to ignore the constant of integration here so we have y2 equals 1 over x times ln of x so this is the second solution so using the principle of superposition we have the general solution giving us y equals c1 times y1 which is 1 over x plus c2 times y2 which is 1 over x times ln of x now we can factor out 1 over x because it is, it is common to each of the two things so we have y equals we factor out 1 over x and then in the bracket we have c1 plus c2 times ln of x so this is the general solution to the given differential equation now let's move on as we take the second example okay so let's try example two so we have the differential equation x square times y prime prime plus x y prime minus 9y equals 0 we have one of the solutions to be y1 equals x to the power 3 so because we want to make y prime prime stand alone we simply divide through by x square by x square x square and then x square so we are going to have y prime prime plus 1 over x times y prime minus 9 over x square times y equals 0 now we compare that to this differential equation y prime prime plus p of x times y prime plus q of x times y equals 0 and then we have p of x comparing the two equations to be equal to 1 over x and then we have y1 also giving us x cube so let's find the second solution that is equal to y1 the integral of e to the power negative the integral of p of x dx divided by y1 square dx so we plug in the expressions for y1 and then p of x we have y1 we have x cube the integral of e to the power negative the integral of p of x which is 1 over x dx divided by y1 that is x cube so we have the square of it and then dx so let's simplify we have x cube the integral of e to the power negative now integral of 1 over x dx we have ln of x and then here we have x to the power 3 times 2 which is x to the power 6 dx next we have x cube we have the integral e to the power now this is negative 1 in front of ln of x so we can transpose or we can transport that to be exponent of x so that becomes ln of x to the power negative 1 now we can represent this as ln of 1 1 over x so that's that and then divided by x to the power 6 dx now from from properties from properties if you have e to the power ln of x so we know this is equal to x for that matter e to the power ln of 1 over x that will be equal to 1 over x so we are going to plug 1 over x in place of e to the power ln of 1 over x so we have we are going to have y2 equals x cube the integral of 1 over x divided by x to the power 6 dx so this becomes x cube the integral of so 1 over x becomes x to the power negative 1 and then this becomes this goes on top that becomes negative 6 so in actual sense it becomes x to the power negative 7 dx so let's try to integrate x to the power negative 
70x. So that becomes x to the power 3 times. So we are going to increase the exponent by 1. We divide through by the total exponent, which is negative 6. And then we are going to ignore the constant of integration. So that becomes x to the power 3 times x to the power negative 6 divided by negative 6. Finally, we have x to the power 3 minus 6, which is negative 3 divided by negative 6. So this is the second solution, y2. Now, according to the principle of superposition, we have the general solution giving us y equals c1, y1, plus c2, y2. So that becomes c1 times y1, which was giving us x cubed, plus c2, y2, which is obtained as negative 1 over 6, times x to the power negative 3. Now, negative 1 over 6 is a constant and then c2 is also a constant. Now, a, con a constant times a constant is equal to a constant. So, we say that let c2 times negative 1 over 6 be equal to c3. Now, in that sense, in that sense, we have y, the general solution y equals c1 x to the power 3 plus c3 x to the power negative 3. Finally, we can represent the general solution as y equals c1 x to the power 3 plus c2 times 1 over x cubed.